Hey Stranger is a simple idea by ordinary people. It all started in November 2013, when me and my friends were following the news reports that were talking about a big refugee camp located just outside our hometown. We learned that this refugee camp had about 300 people accommodated in the camp, and we were very curious, thinking, who are these people? Where do they come from? And how come that they end up here in our rural area in Jämtland, north part of Sweden? We did some research and we understood that it is about 35 armed conflicts around this world right now. Eight of those are wars. No wonder why so many people are running for their, li running for their lives and end up here in Östersund. It's a long way for many people to travel, and the travel are often very, very dangerous. Some people have easier than others. Some people travel across oceans with boats. Some people see their family members die. Some people drown. Some people get shot to death, and some people see families and friends getting blown up by bombs in the air just during the way to come here to Sweden. Me and my friends were very curious and were talking about what is going on with these people right here, right now. These people that are now living in the same society as us. What do they want and what do they need? And instead of asking questions like that to anyone, we decided to go to the, to the refugees themselves and ask those questions. What do they need? So we made a very spontaneous uh, trip to uh, Gritan, which is the big military camp. In Gritan, we met many different nationalities, people from many different countries, and they were all sp talking with the same kind of voice. They all had the same dreams, they all had the same visions. They run for their lives, some leaving their families behind, just to come to Sweden, where they were looking for safety. They wanted a life in peace where they can raise their children. This camp is located outside Östersund, as I already told you, but it is in the middle of the forest, far away from everything else. Many friends told us that they were feeling isolated, and that was a problem. Many come from countries and towns where they have millions and millions of citizens and they run for their lives and end up in a deep forest in the middle of Jämtland, in the north part of Sweden. The isolation made them feel very lonely, because none of us living in Östersund had a reason to actually go to this camp and meet these people. They all said that they wanted to see other faces who were not running for their lives, who was living normal lives and not in during stress 24 hours every day. They needed stress relief. And just, it's kind of easy to just look to yourself and, and ask yourself, so what is good for me? What makes my stress go away during stress, stressful situations? Well, for us, it is sports. And it was very interesting that some of these people that we met during our first visit said that the best thing that actually happened since we arrived in Sweden, that was when one single woman came with a couple of skis and let us try to go cross-country skiing out at the, at the camp. And me and my friends, we are all very passionate skiers, and we thought that, hey, how hard can this be? It shouldn't be hard at all. So we were making a few phone calls, talking to people that we know, since we live here, this is our home. Life for us is so much easier than for them. They come here, they don't have the language, they don't know anyone, and they are living in the middle of the forest. It's easier for us. So just by, using, uh, just by doing these phone calls, we managed to collect tons of skis, both downhill skiing and cross-country skis. And what we did was that we we started a ski school out at the camp, just me and my friends. We decided to go there every Monday night 
to see what would happen. If we just let these people go skiing with us, since that was what they wanted, to be able to fall down in the snow and laugh together as friends, that was what they needed, and that was what we could make happen, because we have the tools. So just by sharing these tools to these people made it possible to bring out laughs, to get rid of the stress, to live a life together where we can talk about something else than just how much we miss our families, how much we worry about our families and the countries where we have been running away from. But it wasn't just easy. We spent a lot of time doing the... Uh, we spent a lot of time trying to get all these skis that was needed, but we didn't think that much far ahead. So when we were having our first day of skiing, we realized that we brought the ski boots, the skis and the poles, but we didn't bring the clothes. And these friends that we are working with in Gritan, they have nothing. So we realized pretty fast that they need clothes as well. So we had to start collecting clothes, and you can see here on the photo that it is a little bit of everything, really. But when we put the right clothes on for winter conditions, they learned how to love snow. Before we came, no one wanted to go outside. It was dark, and it was cold, and it was wet. But we, what we realized pretty soon was that they actually love the snow just as much as we do when they have the right circumstances, the right clothes. It's very easy. We wanted these people to get involved in the way we live and the way we, the way we live in Jämtland. For us, outdoor activities are very important. It's almost like nature is a religion here. And that we took as a responsibility that if they come from, it doesn't matter where they come from, they should be introduced in how we live our lives here in Sweden. And skiing is a big part, and they absolutely loved it. It was fantastic to see that after the winter was over, we have managed to teach about 300 refugees how to go cross-country skiing. We never planned that this project would grow, that this was something that we would do during a longer time. We were expecting to be finished after the winter, because our idea was that we are skiers, we know skiing, we can teach skiing. But when we got to the point when skiing was over, the snow had melted, and we realized that these people are our friends. We cannot just leave them here, because it is a problem. We don't see that anyone take responsibility of the refugees that are coming to this country. They are waiting for a permission to stay in Sweden, but as long as they wait, they have nothing. They have a roof over their heads, they have a bed to sleep in, and food in their stomach, but that is it. But just go to yourself. What kind of life would that be? We want to put value into people's life, and we, by bringing skis to them, realize that it's very, very easy. It's so simple to have a great impact on people's lives. So when the winter was over, we realized that this is what we are supposed to be doing. We must come here more often and do more activities. We cannot just leave our friends like this, since no one else seems to, to take responsibility. And we started different activities, twice, every week. Monday nights and Wednesday nights, and by putting more time into it, we realized that we are a small group and that we need more followers, we need more people who are as engaged as we are in this project, because it takes time. But it is so important that we cannot just let go of it. So, we were connecting sports clubs, companies, uh, volunteers, that just come to us because it's very difficult to bring 300 refugees from a camp into town, into society, when you need a transportation. But what we could do was to encourage other people to take their own car and come out to this forest camp and do activities as much as for themselves, as much as for the friends living in this camp. We did all kinds of activities last summer. 
As you can see on this photo, we were playing games. We were introducing our friends to Swedish games, all kinds of games. We were doing team sports like soccer and volleyball, but we also invited a local dance school who is, of course, great teachers when it comes to dancing. So they came and taught us how to do dancing. We also had a gym who came to teach us how to do uh, exercising in the best way. And we invited all kinds of people who came to contribute with what they felt that they could. And that is the main thing. We encourage initiatives that should come from you. You are supposed to do what you want to do, and you, the things that you want to do, you will do better than those who doesn't even feel like doing it. So for us, Hey Stranger turned out to be a platform where you, who are interested in making a change for this world, can contact us and contribute with what you have. If it is a knowledge about a, a specific subject, if it is a hotel where you think that we should come visit, or if it's a skill within sports or anything else, you are free to come to us and share this with those who need it the most. Our activities are for everyone. They are always for free. Because it's very important for us that we are not only focusing on the asylum seekers. It is still very important for all of us to feel good, to have a good health. But we should remember that the asylum seekers are very often traumatized. The mental health and the physical health is not as good as it should be. And that is the main reason why we spend so much time with our friends. We believe that we can have an impact on both mental and physical health. We see joy. Every time that we go and spend time with our friends, we are overwhelmed by laughs and love. And one of the reasons also why we continue to do this is that we get so much back. We have no money, we have nothing, we have no experience, but we do have a will. We have a will and we have the passion to try to make our best and to actually have an impact. And it is so easy because every time we leave, when we go home to our safe home, we know that it has been super important for our friends that we actually came back and that they know that we will come back. And another good initiative, it is uh, when other people invite us. Our organization is super small, and I said it before, we don't have any money. And that's why it is so important that we can be invited to others already working lives in one way or another. This is a photo from a hike that we were invited to do by a cabin, uh, a mountain hut here in Jämtland County. They said that we think it's very important that these people get the chance to see what else we have in Sweden. They should not only see the deep woods that most of them are actually really afraid of because they believe that there live bears behind every tree and no one have ever told them since they came to Sweden that that is not true. Yes, we do have bears, but it, we also have berries that you can eat and mushrooms that you can eat and we have to teach them about nature, and one way to do that is to show the most beautiful, beautiful part, as if you ask me, I believe it is the mountains. And many of our friends knew about the mountains when they got here, but they had never seen it, so they actually started to question it. Is there really mountains in Östersjön? Because we have seen the photos, but we cannot see them from here. It's our responsibility to show them. Because what we see is that when we share not only our surroundings, we uh, share our stories. It makes our friends feel a little bit more like home. And that is really important because we have hundreds and hundreds of refugees coming here to Sweden wanting nothing else more than to stay here, to build their lives here, to contribute to a great society. It is a gold mine in many different ways. It is so important that we take care of these people who want that. Why are we trying to get more people who doesn't even have had a, a thought about coming to this rural area 
to come here? Why don't we just really take care of those who really want to be here? And it's so easy to do that. And if we can just make these asylum seekers feel like home, we make a big difference. If they get the chance to stay in Östersund, we understand that they want to do that because they tell us. Because of the simple activities that we are doing, they, tell, they say, I feel welcome here. If I could choose, this is where I want to be. This is a photo of the choir that we have started because it's not only sport activities that makes it good for your health. Also singing. I think all of you know what singing does to your body and mind. We started a choir with a local music school and we sing every Wednesday morning and that's really the best part of the week, if you ask me. During Wednesday nights, we have another initiative. We have friends who started a running club. We run. We have athletes who have been competing and running in Eritrea, for example, who come here to run with us, and it is so great. I would like to finish by saying that it is so important to empower ind individuals, that we enrich our society by seeing different cultures every day. We learn from each other, we listen to our stories, and just by seeing these individuals, we do make a great change. And just look at Hey Stranger. We have done fantastic things, and that is only because we have the passion to do so, and that we listen to us, and that we listen to all the people that we meet. Thank you. <laughs>